today we are going to discuss a new chapter that is absorption by roots in this chapter we are going to discuss how roots absorb water what are the processes involved in it roots generally develop from the radical of the embryo and they form the main root the radical gives rise to the main root and the main root later on form branches which are called lateral roots the lateral root branches and form the tertiary roots and these tertiary roots give rise to these fine outgrowths which are known as root hairs the root hairs are unicellular prolongations of the epiplema epiplema is the outermost layer of the roots so as we can see the root hairs generally have cell wall cell membrane the cell wall is made of pectin and cellulose cell membrane is enclosing the cytoplasm the nucleus and the vacuole if you see the structure of the root hairs there we can see the cell wall followed by the cell membrane the maximum portion of the root hair is occupied by the vacuole the cytoplasm and the nucleus that pushed towards the periphery so the root hairs as this vacuole has a higher concentration compared to the soil water so they have a high osmotic potential and this high osmotic potential helps in the absorption of water from the soil now let us see the different regions of the root there are four regions root cap mastematic zone zone of elongation and zone of maturation the zone of maturation is the topmost part below is the zone of elongation and below is the mastematic zone and the tip of the roots are generally covered by the root cap this mass of cells the tip is generally made of the apical meristem which is mainly the meristematic tissue so to protect the delicate cells of the meristematic zone this root cap covers the tip of the root so that this delicate cells can be protected from the wear and tear as the root grows it rubs against the soil particles above the meristematic zone is the zone of elongation where the cells generally elongate and above it is the area of maturation where the cells of the roots generally get differentiated they mature and get differentiated to form different tissues xylem phloem cortical cells from this zone of elong this maturation the root hairs are given out let's see the functions of the root first function it fixes the plant in the soil it holds holds the plant in the soil with the help of the roots the plants generally absorb water and minerals and the water which is absorbed they are then conducted to the different parts of the plant body this roots are 
adapted to absorb <coughs> water. First is the presence of this numerous unicellular root hairs that increases the surface area of absorption. Secondly, the higher concentration of the cell sap that helps in the absorption of water. And thirdly, the cell wall being permeable, it allows easy movement of water from the soil into the root hairs. Now let us see the different processes. We can divide the processes into two categories. One is passive absorption, which does not require any expenditure of energy. Other one is active absorption, which requires active energy, that is energy in the form of ATP. Without the energy, these processes cannot take place. So in the passive absorption, we have three processes by which plants absorb water from the soil. One is imbibation, one is diffusion, osmosis, and in the active, there is active transport. Imbibation. What is imbibation? The phenomenon by which hydrophilic surfaces of the living or dead cells of the plants in the dry or semi-dry state absorb water by surface tension is called imbibation. So what we mean by that? Plants, plant cells when they are living or dead, when they are in their dry or semi-dry state, they act like hydrophilic surfaces. Hydrophilic means, hydro means water, philic means attraction. So these surfaces generally have the tendency to attract water. And this phenomena of absorbing water by surface attraction by the dead or living cells of the plants in their dry or semi-dry state is what we call imbibation. So we can see imbibation taking place in the starch because starch also has that kind of ability. Cellulose and some other proteins we can see. So when imbibation takes place, water moves from a region of saturation to a region where it is unsaturated. So as the water moves, it moves with some force. So that is how water is absorbed into the root hair cells. So this is generally a passive process because it does not require any energy and it is performed by the cellulose which is present in the cell wall starch they are the ones which are present in the cell wall they help in absorbing water by the process of imbibation they are the one which performs the process of imbibation so imbibation helps in the uptake of soil water from the root hair cells by the root hair cells water is taken in and secondly, it helps in the ascent of sap, rising of the water from the root hairs to the upper part of the plant. Now let's see some examples of imbibation. When we take some dry seeds in a closed container and put water in it and then close the lid, and leave it for some time, we will find that the container bursts. Why it happens so? This happens because the seed coats, as they are hydrophilic in nature, they absorb the water by imbibation. So as water enters the seed, 
the seats swell up they increase in volume they exert pressure on the walls of the container the container cannot withstand the tremendous pressure and as a result the container burst open there is one more example we can give during the rainy season we find that doors and windows or drawers they get tight and jammed this generally happens because the dry cells or the dry surfaces of the doors and windows or desk drawers they absorb water from the humid air by imbibition they swell up so the gap between the window and the window frame or the door and door frame or between the drawer and the table it gets reduced so <clears throat> they become jammed so that also is an example of imbibation <clears throat>